you know, you get upset, you know, and, and, and you stand, all this stand up, and all this, let's take, no, 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 you don't come here complaining. This is not the library. Nobody's dead, because Jesus is alive. Is that all you got? And, and I, I, I suffered two heart attacks at the age of 15 years old, had this rare heart disease that was taking my life. And um, after being in the, heart, in the hospital, I had a hole in my heart, and it was enlarging. The hole was enlarging. Doctors told my mother that I wouldn't live probably through the night. And uh, a young girl, 18 years old, down the hall, died of the same thing that I had. And I looked at heaven, and I said, well, I just started preaching. I was 15 years old. I just started preaching. I said, Lord, you know, I can't end like this if, if you just called me. I said, if you heal my body, I'll praise you for the rest of my life. I, you know, I didn't make any promises to God about being a great preacher, but I made promises about being a great praiser. Yeah. If I find me three people, I've done my job. I told him, if you, if, if, you, if you heal me, I won't be ashamed to praise you. I, I, I get to I know I got some, I, I knew some praises were here. I could spot a few of y'all when I came in. So I want the praises to help me set this atmosphere. Open up your mouth one more time and give God what you promised him. So say yes. And so I was on my way to Dallas, Texas to run track. I was a track star and I was going to represent my school in a uh, national track meet when I had my first heart attack and uh, then I was in the pulpit at having the second one and so the doctor said well of course you'll never run again you know you won't be active like that again and that kind of thing and they said um, if you do make it through this they asked me what was my dreams what I wanted to be I was 15 years old I said I'm a preacher they said well what kind of preacher are you I said I am a Holy Ghost preacher <laughs> sanctified preacher and so obviously, obviously my physician or the doctor knew something about sanctified people because he said, well, the way you normally preach, you won't be able to do that anymore because we, you can't exert yourself. So he was getting me ready to be something else. But I told the Lord, if you close this hole up in my heart and let me live, I will praise you and not be ashamed. It, it just tickles me to know in how people could come to church and act like they're somewhere else. Come on, y'all. Now, I can see if I was in a supermarket acting like this, I may be out of order. I can see if I was in the library screaming and hollering, that wouldn't be proper. But when I come to God's house, I shouldn't be looked at strange. When I come to my father's house, I shouldn't feel odd when I want to praise him. I shouldn't feel like the only one. I don't understand this. How, how does the dead people outnumber the praisers? God has been too good to us. I need some people who are not ashamed to open up your mouth, shout up and down, and give God praise. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody say yes. Well, I, I probably don't. My, my presence here tonight sort of finishes the testimony. We all know I didn't die. And that's been 28 years ago. And when the specialist came in to look at my heart after the Lord had healed me. And see, it wasn't, it wasn't in a, a, a grand setting. And I didn't get the opportunity to be, you know, spoken to by Benny Hinn or any great uh, evangelist healer. You know, would have been nice. It, it, it wasn't any dramatic thing. My mother, on the way to the hospital, as they, as the doctor said, take him right in. They had no beds available. And my mother, being an old praying mother, and 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 just loving the Lord, it took me about a noonday prayer at the church. Uh, about four other mothers were there, and they got me in a circle. You know the circle. Uh, put me in a circle and they, you know they didn't have any fancy words they didn't know anything about you know uh, uh, um, any fancy prayers they just simply said Jesus because they knew if we call on Jesus he would answer prayer and, and, and so the mothers prayed around me and, and they start 
quickening. You know, when the church was really saved. You remember that? Remember when the church was saved? When the church was saved. When the church was saved. <laughs> Oh, I feel a Holy Ghost breakthrough here tonight. Somebody gonna get something. I'm not the only one, but somebody gonna get something tonight in this place. You, 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 some of you may have, and, and I do apologize for this for you young people and uh, those of you who came to the church after she was going through her menopause and going through her change of life. Couldn't really birth them like she birthed them before. I apologize for this watered down gospel that you have been had to uh, deal with. I apologize. I apologize for the fact that the church uh, has not been clear in her mission and have not been clear in her worship and her righteousness and holiness toward God. But we came from the church where they taught holiness. Yeah, that's called living right. I know, strange thing in 2010, but it does exist. Those sanctified mothers, because of their prayer life and their, their dedication to God, lay hands on me, and one of them said, ha, ha, it's done. See, I know, I know, I know. It wasn't Tehillah, it wasn't Shabbat, it wasn't Barak, it wasn't Toda. You know, it was, it was, hey! And when she quickened and said, it's done, it was done. Fourteen days later, as they came and ran all kind of tests, and they, you know, they, you know, the medical field sometimes just doesn't want to, you know, admit that miracles happen, so they have to find something to say something happened. But they, 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 they failed at their attempt because the hole had closed up. And he said, you have one of the healthiest hearts I've ever seen. And from that day to this, I've been running around. I haven't ran track, but I've been running around churches. And if I find me some Holy Ghost, I might run tonight. Because I want you to know, Gulfport, Mississippi is under siege by the Holy Ghost. And I've been sent by God to tell you that revival has hit your coast. And the glory of the Lord is coming to your city. I need some people to praise you. Open up your mouth and shout. Hey, 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 hey. It's time I love a now, now, in coming here, I've had visions of this time of us being together. Just glimpses of the glory of the Lord. And so asking God and seeking God about his heart, and I'll let you sit down in a minute. Asking and seeking God about his heart and what he wants us to do. The one thing the Lord was so, was so clear with me is that he said, I want you to announce and declare when you go there that the glory is coming to the gulf. Now, he said, there will be glory on the gulf. Now, I, I, I don't know. I don't know you. Uh, I just, I, I'm meeting this young man for the first time. And I, I do appreciate God for his life. And we praise God for him. Now, now, I, I'm, real, I'm real funny about, I'm real funny about gifts and praising God and honor. Okay, I'm real funny about honor. So, I'm not going to take that little hand clap. Because if it were not for him obeying God. We would not be here together getting this. So let's praise God for the gift. All right. So, so I, don't, I don't know. I don't know the intercessors personally. But I do know them by the spirit. I don't know the prayer warriors by their name. But I know them by their assignment. Somebody has been praying. Not just regular church prayers. Somebody has tapped the realm of the spirit and got God's attention for this area. Whoever you are, I've come to encourage you to continue to travail and lay between the altar and the porch and begin to cry out to God because your city will experience the power of the living God. And there's a move of God coming to the Gulf Coast that will Gulf Coast that will shake America. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not speaking of some small meeting in a corner, but God's about to move among this generation. And there's an anointing about to come that we've never seen before. And signs and wonders and miracles shall be performed. I need some people here tonight who say, I've been one of the ones who've been praying. And that is an answer to my prayer. Who are you? Who are you? 